Hello, this is Robert Rickover. I'm an Alexander Technique teacher in Omaha, Nebraska, and my guest today is Imogen Ragon, an Alexander Technique teacher in Wilmington, Delaware. And we're going to talk today about the broadly two different ways of teaching uh, the Alexander Technique, in, in particular as dealt with in this book, uh, which came out fairly recently. This is a book called Marjorie Barstow and the Alexander Technique, Critical Thinking in Performing Arts Pedagogy by a woman named Amanda Cole, who is, I don't think she's an actual Alexander teacher, but she had lots of experience with uh, classical teaching, particularly Walter Carrington style and then lots of experience with Marge Barstow type teaching in the, uh, with uh, um, uh, Kathy Madden, who was one of the teachers um, Marjorie taught. And um, I think we've, we've talked a little about how of those two, we kind of veer towards the non-classical version that tends to emphasize thinking um, relatively less, maybe even no use of a teacher's hands, um, um, often activity oriented, uh, right, ordinary activities like walking and running and, and singing and dancing kind of activities, and also uh, is very amenable to the group teaching, for example and online teaching, for that matter. And, um, you know, I we both, I think, are pretty much in that second category, emphasizing student taking responsibility for themselves. As as I'm really, um, my personal interest has led me to really be interested in the thinking and empowering my students to be able to think <laughs> think right. for themselves basically that I yeah. so I think probably it's the case for both of us that if even if we were teaching in person right now um you, you wouldn't get like 15 minutes on a table 10 minutes of chair work this that you know you we wouldn't just do those standard procedures I very occasionally might work with someone oh, that way never um, would, but it's um, not the, but that's not how I typically work anymore and I want to just say right off the bat that's kind of what I had when I was first a student and I absolutely loved it right so there's nothing nothing wrong with it there's nothing better or worse about any of the different ways that to me it's like preferences what works for you as a teacher and what works for your students some students will have strong preferences to different ways of working too so. right and i want to at the risk of being overly personal here um <laughs> just say a little <laughs> word about my own introduction to the Alexander Technique, which was in Canada in the 1970s. And there was just one teacher in the whole country who was a McDonald trained teacher. He was Israeli. His English was a little iffy. Um, he, the way he taught is probably at the furthest extreme from the way I teach now. <laughs> However, he I had amazing experiences as a result of that. Not, not even so much during a lesson at first, but afterwards. Mm -hmm. So it led me to become a teacher and it led he several, I know at least three or four other people who were uh, studying with him around that time, one of whom was on my training course, uh, um, be, oh, went on to become teachers. Now, he didn't want to talk about directions. I once asked him about directions. He said, oh, you know, when I use directions, my students would just tighten up, so I don't do it anymore. 
And I thought, okay. I mean, I didn't know about this this the split mm -hmm. uh, at all. All I knew is that he was the only guy, the only Alexander teacher in town, and I just went through amazing transformation in my physicality. I grew a half an inch in a, in a month. My clothes didn't fit. It was just incredible. Okay. Now, fast forward maybe 30 plus years or so, I'm sitting in Marge Barstow's living room for one of her evening classes. And I'm, I'm thinking, I wonder what I would have made of that back when I first started, if that was my first experience of the technique. Because there were people coming to her classes often. It was the, their very first exposure to the Alexander technique. Mm -hmm. At the same time, there'd be people who'd been studying with her for years or visiting teachers who'd been teaching for years. Mm -hmm. It'll all be thrown together. And I, I thought, you know, I don't know that the me back then would have known what to make of this. And I might have just written it off as some sort of kooky new age thing, because I would not have been able to see the differences that emerged, certainly mm -hmm. visually. I wouldn't have had that ability back in the day. And I might have just thought the whole thing was just kind of nuts and, and, and just well, said, well, you know, that's fine, but not, not for me. I actually wonder about that. It's not quite as extreme, maybe, as as the the difference, you know. But um, whether because I love teaching groups now is how I like to mm -hmm. to work mainly. But I don't think I'd have wanted to join a group. I felt much safer going to one person and. So I don't know. So there's a lot of factors. Um, yeah, yeah. I mean, uh, when I was talking to the author of this book, uh, Amanda, mm -hmm. uh, um, I, I was telling her that uh, Walter Harrington, I had lessons with him uh, at the same time while I was training at, a, at an offshoot course of his. And he once told me that... Um, he, when he's teaching a new student, when he has a new student, but for the first 10 lessons, he would do everything possible to avoid talking about the Alexander technique. He would deliver his famous little talk during, that would start a few seconds or a minute or so after the lesson began and would end right at the end of the lesson that went in strange directions, but there was never any mention of the Alexander technique. It was just, he had some things he wanted to say, and they, I think, were probably quite relevant to what he was doing. Um, now, his clientele of private students was mostly pretty old people, a lot of old people. Whereas, you know, Marjorie Barstow out in Lincoln, she's working with a lot of young people, a lot of young people, and a lot of performers and dancers and people that had really had things they really wanted to work on, you know? I think that's also a difference, this kind of performance side of the technique that, you know, that attracts a lot of people, whereas I came to it because of neck pain and shoulder tension I just wanted help with that the thought of joining a group and having to do something in front of people was not would, would not have been helpful to me at that time okay. so. although Marge Marge was always very careful if there were new people to say if you don't want to participate you're it's fine for you just to watch she gave people that out. And there were people who d wouldn't say anything for, for the first few times they came. Mm -hmm. They needed to acclimate uh, yeah. to, to, to it. But uh, yeah, it's per the per performers, the, uh, of course, have this special interest in the technique because their careers really depend on good use. Mm -hmm. 
And and of course they also have the same kind of neck and back, whatever pains. That... Yeah. Um, but they'll have that added interest of the performance and of being in front of people. And right. Yeah. Right. So right. And um but but I think what Marge did was sort of break down the barrier between quote performers and just people who you could say are performing also, you know, the world's a stage. What is it? We're, all the world's a stage. All the world's a stage. And we're <laughs> Something just, like that, yeah. We're just walking across with our little... <laughs> well, our we're on our video lines. stage right now. <laughs> so, yeah. yeah. So anyway, uh, I think it's just important to say that this difference that's brought out in this book very clearly using a lot of um not just a lot of interviews with people but in this book uh, she had access to lots of personal correspondence between marge frank pierce jones uh, john, uh fm alexander and john gooey all kind of in a mix there corresponding with each other and saying things that i had never imagined that Marge actually thought because she was very careful what she said with with us. So, you know, it could be seen as kind of a swipe at the classical way of teaching, but I don't really see it that way. I think, I think the classical way of teaching for some people is probably by far going to be the only way you're going to get to some people. Mm -hmm. And so, and just like online teaching, there are, gonna, there are some people that just online's just not going to work. Really. Right. And there's are some people, dare I say, that it actually works better with. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. But um, so I just wanted to kind of put that out there that it's not about one being um over you know being critical one way being critical it's it's about preferences but you know our, our preference is for number two of those two and uh, yeah and i think between us there's a similarity but we don't teach in the same way no so no we had different so, we had different so you know we've talked about two main strains but there's probably like <laughs> Yeah, a thousand different ways you can teach the Alexander technique. Um, yeah, yeah, she's very clear that she's not saying there's like one a precise thing, and the, there are many, many variants. And you have all sorts of teachers who it's a little tough to know how they fit in. People like Margaret Goldie, for example, you know, she was, certainly wasn't into the classical stuff, but she wasn't the Margite either. Mm -hmm, she mm -hmm. was very much her own person. And AR was a little, would be a little iffy to slot into this. So it's not like um, watertight compartment. Uh, yeah, none of it is an absolute. But but I would say I would say that for people who are who who are only doing one, it might be interesting for them to explore the other. Mm -hmm. um, I I remember a couple of times going to AGMs, MSAT AGMs, and having oh, that, lessons, yeah. having lessons with uh, teachers who were very totally in the McDonald tradition of you know, up and down, up, you know, the McDonald's mm -hmm. style teaching. And I found it very useful because they, mm -hmm. they were good at that and they could get you to places that maybe you couldn't get at something that, yeah. Yeah. So do you have anything else you want to say on this? Uh, no, except I, in some ways I feel quite lucky with my own training mm -hmm. because um, while the most direct line is through Carrington, Daria, who was my trainer, trained herself with Don Burton, and she was an actor. She is an actor, and she also went to a couple of workshops with Marge, or I don't know how many. She, mm -hmm. When she was in London, she had lessons with everyone that she could, I guess similar to you in that way. Um, mm -hmm. And so while I kind of had classical it wasn't just it was all I trained with this offshoot of Walter Carrington's course that was pretty classical although 
uh, it, Paul and Betty Collins were the main uh, people working on it, but there were others, Vivian Mackey, and Don Burton used to come. And, mm -hmm. um, Paul, especially, was a pioneer in what he called the application approach. He, he worked with runners. He'd run mm -hmm. along beside them. He would work with musicians playing. I remember coming into class and he'd be finishing off a lesson with a violinist or a singer or something. And that isn't the kind of thing that other training courses in London did at that time. Also, he was quite amenable to group work. So he was he he was quite on the, you know, not at the far end of that other. Mm -hmm. And um yeah, so we both were lucky, I think, in our training and yeah. in our experiences. So maybe for anyone watching this who's solidly in one camp, you might want to just check out the other because there might be something useful there for you as well. Mm -hmm. Anything else that you didn't think you want to say before we? Um, I don't think so. <laughs> All right. So my, my guest today is uh, Imogen Ragon. And Alexander teacher in Wilmington, Delaware. I'll put a link to her website. I'll put a link to a, a site that has more information about the, the Alexander technique. Thank you so much, Imogen. Thank you.